All right, good morning, afternoon or evening. Um, today I'm going to be playing Colbert for the How I Play series. So here we are. This is the Tier 10 Research Bureau Cruiser Colbert. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing you the build, of course, as usual. So we have Lost Stand, Priority Target, um, Dem Demolition Expert, yes. <laughs> Heavy AP and HEs and Sap Shells and then Adrenaline Rush, Superintendent, Survivability Expert and Concealment Expert. And then for my modules, I have Range Mod or Gunfire Control System Mod 2, Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Engine Boost Mod 1, and main armaments model one so this is what the colbert looks like i know the sport sliding isn't too crazy but this is marseille for you here you are this is the colbert um do i recommend the ship well i'll just walk you through it in the game and then we can talk about that type of stuff but do i recommend the colbert in short if you enjoy playing ships like i do um yes i love the colbert it's probably one of my favorite ships in the game i do actually have a lot of fun in it um i have a lot of games in it as well but um like I said, it's not a ship for everyone, and it's quite a... It's not an expensive expensive price point. I mean, it kind of is, but again, it's comparable to other research bureau ships. So is it too expensive? I don't think so. It's pretty much a standard. Um, I'm not sure, guys. Really and truly, it's you that has to decide um, what ship you want. Um, there'll be a link for the... Um, the armory video where I talk about each research bureau ship on the top right here. I'll try to leave a timestamp as well for you guys. So you click on the top right if you want to actually look at the other research bureau ships to see. But I only give a brief summary in that video. But anyway, let's continue on for who wants to watch the Colbert games. So here we are in our first game. So what do we have important to note is let's start off looking at the cruisers. Really and truly, um, two of them overmatch us. So we have to be careful. Napoli and Gudenlu overmatch us everywhere. We have to be careful to those ships. Um, Colombo does sap Citadel us, so we have to also be careful of that one. Um, United States, I mean, it's pretty much midway from what I've been told. And then Holland, Tashkent, I mean, we have to watch the tours from the Holland, but that's about it. I'm sorry, again, if there's constructions, not noises outside. Um, really out of my control, guys. This is the only way I can get a video out for you guys. Um, if, if they're unbearable, do let me know in the comments. If they're bearable and you don't really hear them, well, also let me know in the comments. I'm just trying to figure out what is going on. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Alright, so this is the Colbert. So I'm going to try to talk about what I'm going to be doing in these games. Um, and see what, what we can do, okay? So what I want to do right now is I'm going to try sit with my Mogador a tiny bit. And see what he sees for a second. Remember, there's not really too many destroyers in this match. And the planes are on the other side. So we can pretty much um, play how we want right now. Alright, so Napoli's here. Keep that in mind. That Napoli has similar detection to us. We have 9.8. He has 10.3. Um, remember, I'm going to try to save my speed boost. So when we start actually, like, shooting. So this is the scary one. The really scary one. The Colombo. That's going to be the scariest ship on their team for us. Because... He saps Citadel's us. As long as we can try avoid that situation from happening, we're going to be okay. But if that situation happens, we're going to be fucked. So I'm going to ping the Tashkent here to see if anyone, uh, like the CV or something, flies over him. So we can probably just end up killing him. I'm going to use speed boost right now. Because if the Tashkent comes around the corner and spots me, I don't want to have speed boost off when the Colombo is able to shoot me. So I'm just going to turn it on prematurely. I'm also going to turn left here. Because... Here's a Tashkent, here we are. Alright, so his concealment's pretty bad. So we're going to be able to shoot him. He's going to go dark for a split second here, which is okay. We did 3k. Let's see if he comes back up. He did. So, slow down. That's what I try to do. Someone is aiming at us. We're looking at PT. Someone is aiming at us on the map. I don't have time to look at what's aiming at us, but all I can assume, it's one of the battleships, right? So, just try be angled to them like we are trying to do, right? And just hope for the best. Hope they miss. Because you slowed down and started reversing and hope they missed. Um, we need to concentrate a bit more on the aiming here. And less on the dodging. So we can actually get this Tashkent killed. We will get the Tashkent first blood here. Not bad. Double permafire. And we also get a Soyuz to farm here for free. And there we go. We got Citadel from a... I believe it was a Colombo. Could have been the Izumo. It doesn't matter what Citadel does. Whatever did, it settled us. So we have to play a bit more safe for sure. Try stay behind this island, stay dark, and just try farm the Soyuz or the Izumo 
or the Colombo. Just get some damage. Mostly how you get damage in this. It's basically like a destroyer, right? So these guns are destroyer guns, guys. They don't pen battleships in terms of their bow and aft plating. Um, neither with IFHE, so don't waste IFHE on this ship. It's useless. Um, you have to play for fires and superstructure damage in these ships. That's what you're playing for. Fires and superstructure damage. Um, and that's what we're trying to do right now. That's how we're getting our damage. Any damage you see is basically from the superstructure here. I'm really scared of this uh, Napoli walking around on the corner on me. So I'm going to try to reverse as much as possible to this island. And try force him to take my Montana and FDG on before he actually takes me on. Uh oh. We are spotted from the Ismo. And I'm probably going to get shot at by both of these guys. So let's see what we're going to do here. He did shoot me the Colombo. He was ready for it. That's okay. We're going to go dark. And the Ismo also shot me. Um, we did accelerate dodge that one. This Napoli is really annoying for me right now, so we're gonna have to deal with that. I need to shoot down his aircraft. Please, why is it not uh, engaging AA? Wow. Immunity, okay. Um, I need to just not die to this Colombo. I'm really panicking because he has a lot of shells. This guy is literally killing himself right now. I'm gonna just try reverse onto the rock as much as possible to make his life awful if he wants to try kill me. Right? So, don't... Don't feed these people. They do not deserve kills or damage. When they play like this to try kill you one for one, never try to like play against them here. Just sit behind a rock like this and ruin their day. Because they definitely do not deserve any damage in this situation, dude. Like seriously. When we see deem it safe enough, we can actually fight them. But I'm telling you right now, it's not safe enough. Because we pull out, the Colombo will kill us. We can try abuse of the rock here. Because we do have better arcs than him. But I'm a bit scared because he does overmatches everywhere. I'm not sure why he's here in his Napoli. It's a bit weird champ to be honest. I mean when his smoke runs out he dies. So. To my battleships and Yoshino. Look at him. He's going to try either kill himself to kill me. Or he's going to turn around. I hope he turns around. Because that gives me time to live. We'll see. It's a bit tough. Because he has quite a fair amount of armor. But our battleships aren't going to be doing the job on him. So all we have to do is just apply some damage. And help our battleships kill him quickly. So then we're allowed... To, we'll be legally allowed to play the game again. Because right now we are not legally allowed to play the game. So the Good Lu has chosen to strike me. Which is actually a pretty bad drop. Because I am broadside. I don't assume I'm going to get one shot. He could have gone for the bow and FDG. Which he would have actually gotten quite a lot of damage on. Instead, he chose to get zero damage. Napoli Torps incoming. We're going to Hydro. I should have Hydroed earlier, but that's okay. So, I should be dark if I shoot here. I don't want to shoot right now because I don't have speed boost. I'm a bit scared. Actually, the Colombo just shot, so I'm just going to shoot. Yeah, I'm dark. This is perfect. We get the free farm again. So... Now here in this game, for example, reload mode could have been just fine in Colbert, but I spec into range as I talked about in the Des Moines video because there are certain games where you literally won't be allowed to play. If people are running away from you, away from the islands, you won't be allowed to play open. It's tough. I mean, you can definitely do it. I did it before, of course, but um, it's tough. So I think specking into range mode just makes it easier, especially for the average player. Definitely, I would recommend the range mode as I'm using right now. So here we're going to free farm this Colombo. He did DCP, so whenever his 15 second DCP runs out, we're going to be able to set perma fires. I want to reverse a bit here because the Izumo is going to come around the corner, and if he smuts me and they shoot me, I die instantly. So I am going to try and get some damage like this. Fire, perfect, permanent. That's good. That's what we want. That's how we're going to be farming damage in Cold Bears, guys. Permanent fire, superstructure damage. I'm going to speed boost again, and I'm going to shoot this Izumo here. You know, fun fact about the Cold Bear, this ship was built in real life. Um, it was built in real life as the com as the ship we have in game. I believe there was two of them. There was this one, the Cold Bear, and there was also the the Grass. And don't get it confused with the De Grass at tier six. It it was a Cold Bear. It was the same as Cold Bear. Did I just get shot by the FDG? Um, I'm a bit scared of that. I might just go dark because uh, there's battleships on both sides now. What I need to do here is pro um, actually what I need to do, yeah. So all right, I'll go dark. So I have to go dark by law, and then leave. And then when I'm in the open, I can fight the Soyuz. Right now, I'm not allowed to. We're actually losing the game quite a fair amount here, sadly. We do have to kill this overextended FDG. 
It's okay. I'm gonna go dark in two seconds. As as long as I don't die. Alright. Here we go. Alright. We're fine. I can't shoot the FDG. Because this way is gonna be on our broadside on the 10 line. What I can do is go where our Yoshino is and probably kill the FDG. Or they probably kill the FDG themselves. This is killable also. I would shoot it, but I'm probably quite... I'm quite certain he has a heal on. Whenever I start shooting, it's probably bait. So I'm not gonna actually shoot that. Um, one and two are really low. And so is that. I'm gonna go kill the Soyuz. No, 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 no. Should I? I feel like I'm gonna waste time killing the Soyuz. I feel like he's like baiting me into wasting time. But, we'll see. Okay, it's actually bow in, so it's actually workable here. So I'm gonna try do some damage to him. Let's see if he one shots me. Hopefully not. We slow down, turn out. I <laughs> it's pretty much my only dodging <laughs> ability that I that I make use of right now. Dodging by turning out. Unless I'm closer to being turned in, then I'll turn in. But the uh, the Colombo is actually shooting me right now. That is making me want to uh, go dark. But let's see. I might just go dark here. Ah, no, he missed. I just want a permafire before I go dark, you know what I mean? Because a permafire will do a lot of damage. He missed. Permafire. Colombo is shooting me again. But there's an... Oh, there's an island here. I, we just have to kill the Soyuz, no matter what here. I'm going to just try my best. Get as much DPM on him as possible. He has good snats off. That's okay. He's gonna heal. He's gonna power heal and he's gonna have a DCP running. I think he killed me because I slowed down too much. Okay, I'm fine. Alright, perfect. Perfect. Oh no, he permed my turret with the Colombo. How sad is that? It's unfortunate. I hate when people permanently destroy my turret. I'd rather just die in, in the game, dude. And it's a turret we would have to be using right now, but it's okay. It is what it is. Ship speed increase because we got 2 million potential. I use Abonion on Colbert as I do on Kleber and stuff. Because you can use them. You can just rotate it for free. So I actually use Abonion on Bourgogne, Jean Bar, Colbert, Kleber, and Marceau, right? And I, I could use it on Champagne and Le Terrible, you know? Because it's... Um, well, they're all like premium ships, right? So, well, not premium. So this one's a special ship, and Marceau's a special ship, and Bourgogne's a special ship. But you can re put captains on those, like rotate them around for free. So it's very nice. Um, all right, we're just gonna remain dark here for a second. I don't really want to deal with the Vermont right now. Uh, hopefully, our CV can actually spot it for us. We can actually probably just he, if he spots it for us, we can actually free farm him here. Oh yeah, I think so. Here we go. All right, perfect. So. This is actually pretty good. Now, as long as he keeps spotting in for us, we are going to get free farm on this Vermont, which is going to be really nice because we not only get the cap resets, we also get some damage, which we're kind of looking for right now. Um, let's see, 2,000 damage. No fires, obviously. Oh, I'm spotted by Minotaur. This is really bad. This is a really bad situation. This is horrible. I might just die instantly. Oh, no. It's unfortunate, guys. I think I'm dead. Uh, oh yeah, look how many shells. Oh my god, okay, I'm alive. Confederate, that's okay. That literally doesn't matter right now. I need to stay alive, that's what matters. If we want to win this game, I need to stop trolling. I need to stay alive. These two need to push back into A, by law, if we want to have a chance at winning. Dude, Maple Grinder in chat right now, he kind of knows what video is coming out tomorrow somehow. He might know. Anyway, I'm not streaming this, by the way. This is not on Twitch. Um, I'm doing this at 2.40 in the afternoon. Um, 14.40. Um, we're not talking resolution. We're talking the time um, on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday, 1st of uh, March. This is the 1st of March. So this will be the second video on March. Um, if you watch the Twitch clip compilation video I posted yesterday, it will be. Well, for me, it's today, but for you guys, it will be yesterday. Um, 
I hope you enjoyed it, of course. Very cool, uh, interesting video. Okay, we need to play a bit safer, dude. I need spotting, that's all, man. Like, that's, that's all I need. With spotting, I can kill this Vermont easily, for free, guys. And when we kill the Vermont, the Ibuki's free farm. I, there's no way the Ibuki kills me if I kill this Vermont, by the way. Like, no chance, ever. So, I'm going to try kill this Vermont. Our CV just needs to spot it, basically, man. I was about to ask to put a fighter. I had caps lock on, by the way. Um, um, I was gonna ask to put a fighter, but... Fighters on super CVs last like four seconds, don't they? So they suck. Alright. Just putting it again. Yeah, he's, he's letting me know that they're, they're jet fighters. Jet fighters on, on really bad. They're really bad for actual spotting, I believe. I don't know. I have no idea because I haven't played them, but I think they last really short duration, so. Definitely not on him here. But he is spotting for us, which is really nice. We're going to get to kill this Vermont. We just need to be care care about the Ibuki shooting AP on my broadside here, so I'm gonna reverse again into the Vermont. We're just trying to get as much damage as possible on the Vermont right now, guys, and try to get him down. Because we do need him dead. There we go. There's the kill. That's what we needed. Let's move south and kill the Ibuki. And um, this game is definitely not over, but definitely close to being over. Merci. Um, we will try get the Ibuki without dying. Oh my god, I think I'm dead. <laughs> no! <clears throat> nah, I'm fine, bro. Now, I'm going to turn turn out and hope the Izumo doesn't settle me. Izumo has relatively fast shells, I believe. So, we just need to just run away. Alright, Ibuki turning broadside. He has AP. Uh-oh. Alright, we're fine. We angled in time. Can we get the magical number, guys? Last time in the Grozovoy video, I missed the magical number by 11,000. We did get the magical number, that's fine. Okay, so we got 300,000 damage so far. Oh my, he just said it at me through my ass with Ibuki AP. So, let me just try live. Okay, we're fine. Now I turn into the Izumo. I'm actually gonna go cap C first, and then we'll go kill the Izumo. So I'm gonna turn around, and we're gonna be shit. Alright. Um, pretty good game so far, though, I have to say. These live recordings, man, I do play better when I'm not streaming, apparently, and I'm actually just recording a video like this and just talking about it live. Um, we did get 306k for our first game. Second game probably won't be as much, but uh, first game, I think that's definitely what we're absolutely gonna get here this game, because that Izumo is gonna get farmed out by our CV and our team. So, I think we take 306k and we're happy with that. But uh, let's see if we can get any more since they're dying. I'm gonna cap C. I want to make sure we win this game, okay? I want to make sure we win this game. I mean, we'll definitely win this game because the Izumo is gonna die to the Slava and the CV. And I don't think the Minotaur can really fight on his own against the Slava, CV, and me. But we'll see. Yeah, he's only 10k HP too. Speed boost did run out. That's okay. Do as much damage as we can to this Izumo. I think our CV will just torp him out, but it's okay. I'm actually not hitting this guy. Trying to look at the map to aim on him. I did set him on fire, but our CV will actually end up finishing him. So, GG. Nice game. He did miss out our Kraken because of that, but that's okay. Okay. So... For our first game in Cold Bear, let's actually go back to port. And I, so someone asked me in the comments last time why I go back to port and come back. I answer, I did reply, but I'm gonna add reply again in the video. I do it so I show the background of the map because I prefer like the background of the map than what the last scene was. So we got so 900 shell hits and 900 shell hits, four kills, 23 fires, and we got a Wither, a Confederate, Dreadnought, First Blood. And high caliber and 308,000 damage. All right, for team score, we ended up getting 3.1k base XP, 
pretty good game for us. I will have to compliment the Eagle there for spotting the Vermont for us, even though he is a carrier, guys. Still, he did spot for us, so he did do that for us, which was really important. 3.1k base XP. Again, these five achievements, whether Confederate, Dreadnought, First Blood, and High Caliber. We got four kills and 13 plane kills. Again, very good game for the Colbert. Very good game. Um, in terms of detailed report, 89k was on the, Monta uh, on the Vermont. 76k was on the Soyuz. 30k almost on the Tashkent, 16k on the Ibuki, 50k on the Colombo, and some chip damage on everything else. We took 64,000 damage, and as you can see, most of the damage came from HE, plus the fires. As you can see, two, 197k from HE, plus the 94k from fires. We were really lucky with fire RNG, plus they actually let them burn for the most part. And in terms of AP, we got 16k, and A defense, whatever, 12k. But there you go, our tower did get permanently destroyed, and we did have 2.5 million potential damage but there you go that is the detailed report and for credits and xp we got 797,000 credits 16,000 xp 4,000 free xp and 19,000 uh, commander xp but that is with some flags on too so let's go for our second game in colbert for our second game in colbert here because i always like putting two games now, people oh, um, sometimes um, comment and say, oh my god, Malta, these 40-minute videos suck. Well, actually, they don't actually say that anymore, but they used to. Um, the reason we do these videos is because um, the How I Play videos, I don't like just featuring one game. I'd rather feature two games. So if we get a good game like that, um, it doesn't like swing your opinion by like an insane amount. I, I would rather get these two games in even if like you don't have to watch both games Obviously you can pick and choose which game to watch for example you watch a game today you watch a game tomorrow for example I mean there, there there's ways of watching right and and people seem to like it also in the in the comments because it's also almost a mini stream, right? Because I'm I'm playing just two games and just talking, right? It's almost like a, a Twitch stream on stream on Twitch, sorry, but um, just small version, you know, just a YouTube version of one ship in particular where people can just watch and and uh, you know just uh, comment about it and ask questions and comments and stuff. But here we are. Also, um, yesterday I did enable YouTube membership. If you guys noticed. Um, there's a join button now on my channel, which if you guys, um, some of you guys wanted to support me and um, didn't want to do it on Twitch, for example, you can now do it on YouTube, for example. You just click the join button and there's all the information there. You also get access to emotes and a little badge next to your name in the comments, for example, if you want to comment. And you get a role on Discord if you link your Discord with, with YouTube on Discord. But there you go. So that's what happens if you join the YouTube membership. You obviously, you don't have to, guys. It's just something that was brought up from viewers. And I enabled it because it seemed like a good idea. But anyway. So second game. This map is probably one of my least favorite maps in the game. Because it's very, very luck-based. Now, why do I say that? It's because there's no guaranteed chance damage is going to come our way. So uh, some teams, for example, all go this way and you're left like alone here without it being able to farm or they sit back here behind this island and it's really tough you know it's just very luck based in terms of where the enemy team is gonna go it's not really luck it's more like they're the enemy decision making now what ships do i have to deal with here moskva i think moskva is really easy to deal with plymouth easy easy salem it used to be easy back in the day but colbert got turbo nerfed in terms of the ifhe change so it's not easy anymore um Marceau, Shema, Harugumo, Kitakazi. I'm probably scared mostly of the Harugumo and the Kita, to be honest, because they have smoke. The Marceau won't be able to smoke screen. And um, so the battleships I don't really like fighting against here is definitely the Burgon and the Lapanto. Lapanto, because he can sap Citadel me and his dispersion is bad, which makes it good against me, because if he aims poorly, it literally doesn't matter, because he can still sap Citadel me. But anyway, the scariest one is definitely the Burgon. Because, one, I don't get to farm it a lot because it doesn't have a lot of HP for a tier 10 battleship. And two, well, it's really fast, so I have to deal with that. And its shell speed is actually pretty fast, so I'm going to shoot the Marceau twice here. We did 6k first salvo, pretty good damage on him. He's probably molding another 1.5k, so that's 7.6k on the Marceau. That's a good start, and we just go dark there without taking any damage. Um, as, as I do always, guys, turn out. That's how I dodge every time. I don't like telling you guys because now you're just going to shoot me as if I'm going to turn out every time. But here you go. That's information for you. 
So let's uh, try to do some damage on the Plymouth. Alright, so we've done uh, around, we're at 7.6 or whatever, so now we're at uh, 13, so that's around 6, 7k, almost. I would say 6k, let's don't overestimate it. Let's uh, also start shooting the Lapanto here, he's in gun range. Slow down, turn out again, Malta, really? It's the same dodging thing again? It might not work here because the Lapanto aimed for it. Alright, he missed. I am missing. He is turning out, that's why. Because I'm shooting too low. Because he's turning out. I'm shooting like this, which is waterline, and he's turning out. So obviously they're going to go low here. We did get a double fire. I don't think they're permanent. I need to also turn out a bit more, because I will die. There's 9.5k from Sap. He's on triple permafire. They might not be permafire, but I'm so begging they are permafires, because that's a lot of damage we're gonna about to receive if they're permanent. He's actually gonna beat, so I'm gonna reverse. I'm gonna hit my engines into full reverse. I'm gonna get as close to him as possible, so we can farm him out to dead here, because this is pretty much a free kill sent by Wargaming Gods. Um, look at this guy. He's beached, dude. He's beached, burning on triple permafire, guys. How, how beautiful is this site, by the way? Fun fact, again, Colbert was built in 1950-something? I don't know. Uh, but let me tell you, it was an AA cruiser. Sorry, I kind of stopped talking about it last game. It was an AA cruiser originally built, the specification, I believe. But then was uh, replaced, not replaced, but changed into a missile cruiser, I believe. Or, or a cruiser with missiles or something. And then in 2007, I believe, it was decommissioned and became a museum ship in somewhere. I don't know the exact details, I'm just bringing it out of my mind. And then in, I think, 2017, it was scrapped, I believe. I believe the ship is scrapped. I think it's gone now. It was here for a while, guys, but sadly, it is gone. No! Oh, whatever, the key carry killed Alright, when this, um, we just have to push up now. Plymouth can't fight us. Marceau can't fight us. Montana's in mid. I'm, I am thinking of actually going mid to counter the Montana. But I feel like it's more effective for us to go into their spawn and play from behind them. Plymouth has improved acceleration, we have to keep in mind. We can't shoot the destroyer, obviously, before you ask questions. He's behind an island, hello. Ba 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 We do kill the Plymouth, he's dead already. I can assure you, he is dead already. I'm joking, he slowed down too much. <gasps> oh! He's dead. Told you, he's dead already. All right, let's go for the Montana. Nice work. This one, I, I'm gonna just let you guys know right now, this one is not gonna be a good match in terms of damage. Uh, my average in Colbert is 130,000, which I wouldn't say is too good, but I think it's fine for me. I, I mean, I play this thing and I have a lot of fun. I think 130,000 average damage is fine, um, but um, my highest was pre-nerf Colbert original, um, the pre-IFHE change. That one, my highest was 352,000 damage. It was a solo game. It was a solo game. Um, and that one was before IFHE was changed. That one was a god spec Colbert, by the way. That was the best version of Colbert ever, um, but they did nerf it um, because of the IFHE change. Oh, we got the cap, so we have improved fire chance now. Perfect. So I'm going to keep going this way and try to get better shots on this Montana. Even though we have fine shots here, I just want to get to see the ship so I know what the fuck I'm shooting at. Because right now I have no idea what I'm shooting at, to be honest. Okay, he's accelerating. So we have speed boost in 30 seconds. I'm going to pre-heal because we have five of them. Colbert does get a lot of heals. What's he doing? I don't know. We don't have torps to tell his speed. Uh, we do have the mod, but this mod doesn't really work too much, honestly. Sometimes when he accelerates, like right now, it's still yellow, for example, and he's accelerating, so it's supposed to be showing as green. Now it's showing as green. It's like, you know, weird. Like, I'd rather have torps, because torps give you more information. Not even by shooting them, literally just by holding tree and just checking. Or you can just look at the smokestack, but the torp, the torp technology is the best one, definitely. Let's try kill him here. 
I think I just killed myself by turning left. Unfortunate. Yeah, I definitely killed myself, GG boys. Actually didn't end up dying, but that was really bad for me. Oh well. We do get to heal a lot of it, I guess. That's really unfortunate. Sorry, boys. Mm, let's see what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go farm the Moskva, basically. We should have been like 40k HP right now, but our fault. My fault. Sorry. But this is the thing, right? It happens. And that's why I don't want to only feature a 300k game where everything goes well, because... Because that's not really what's gonna happen every game, especially for a lot of people, especially for the average player. That's not gonna happen every game, right? So I want to feature something like normal, right? Which is me making a mistake, because I'm I'm not perfect either. Obviously, I, I you know. Um, but here we are, still alive. That's fine. The important thing is to never give up, right? So we're gonna get behind this island, go dark. And we're gonna start shooting on this guy and basically try to do as much damage as possible. Remember, Moskva is a bit annoying to shoot as well um, because it has quite a fair amount of armor compared to Colbert, or at least compared to Colbert gun penetration. But it also only burns for 30 seconds, unlike Stalingrad. Stalingrad's wonderful to shoot at, even though it has the armor, because it burns for 60 seconds and it has no fire prevention. But Moskva only burns for 30 seconds. Even though it has no fire prevention, it's still quite annoying to shoot the thing. Dude, he's turning in a way to dodge me. He's very he's being very smart here, but I think here we're gonna start getting some damage on him. I just wanna get to see him, man. Here we go. Now we can actually shoot him. Because when I shoot over islands, man, I suck a bit, because I can't really I don't really know what the ship's doing at all. I look at the map, but like you know. It's just easier just to see the ship, even though it puts you at a higher risk, obviously. But uh, I just want to see the ship. He's shooting AP at me. We just need to not show our full ass on here, because then he can sit at me through that. I'm just trying to be as angled as possible here. We're going to try sector the plane, so we do as much damage as possible to them. I'm going to turn broadside to the Moskva. Might get me killed, but I don't really care at this point. We're gonna kill the Moskva here. Oh, Kuznetsov actually got procced. He dies anyway, doesn't matter. I hope. It does take him 60 times as long to die with Kuznetsov on. But there we go, we do end, end up killing him. Now people ask me, why do I zoom out and in all the time? I just want to see shells incoming, that's all. I want to see shells incoming. I want to know where they're coming from. I want to know what I have to do to dodge if possible. That's pretty much it, really. That's all uh, in terms of that. Alright, so we have the Burgon we can shoot, or the Salem that's full broadside. I'm gonna shoot the Salem who's full broadside here. I have to turn out quickly before the Salem's able to shoot me. We're gonna shoot in front of him because he's about to accelerate. You have to prepare because the thing with Colbert shells is they take quite a fair amount of time to reach. Confederate again. Now, when Salem angles like this, it's gonna be even harder to kill than the Burgon. Even though he's so low HP, it's gonna be actually harder to kill than that Burgon. Because it's so... it's much harder to hit. Because it's so much smaller. Tinner, I would say. I think it's the wit that makes it uh, harder to hit. There we go. But we do end up winning this game again. 155k damage. Um, I'm going to skip to the end of this game so you guys don't have to waste time watching me chase a shimmer. Um, so, if I do skip in the video, I'll see you in the end screen. Okay. So, the game ended. It didn't really take too long, honestly, but I'm just gonna edit that part out. Um, so let's go and look at the end screen. I'm gonna go back to port like I always do, guys, as you know, because I want to show you guys the picture of the map, the lovely picture of the map in the background. So here we are. So we ended up getting 155,000 damage. We got 485 shell hits, 11 plane kills, 1 kill, 10 fires, and a defended and a cap. So actually a pretty decent game, better than I expected, to be honest. And we did end up getting top of the team again, 2.3k base XP in Colbert. And we did get a confederate, that's our achievement. For detailed report, we got 20,000 damage on the Plymouth, 41k on the Moskva, 38k on the Lapanto, 34k on the Montana, 
and 11k on the Salem. Um, the Marceau got hit quite hard at the start, but we didn't really actually get to hit them anymore after that. In terms of damage, most of it, is, as you can see, is HE damage. Again, 97,000 HE and 46,000 fire from that HE, plus uh, 11k AP, so not bad. Um, one, 1 million potential, 42,000 damage taken. And in terms of credits and XP, guys, we ended up getting 500,000 credits. 9,000 uh, XP, 2,000 free XP, and 12,000 commander XP. But there you go. That's the second Colbert game. Um, let's take a look at our build once again. Um, just to show you here. So for my build, I'm running Last Stand, Priority Target, Demolition Expert, Heavy HE and Sap Shells, Adrenaline Rush, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, and Concealment Expert. And then in terms of my equipment... I am running Gunfire Control System Mod 2, Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, and then Engine Boost Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. So, that is my Colbert build. Obviously, you can run Reload Mod if you want. I've played it with Reload Mod. I actually have a 290k game. It's an, quite an old one compared to now. It was like 6 months old on my YouTube channel of Colbert Reload Mod. But here we are running the build I recommend to run. Of course, I'm going to open these crates and I'll just walk you through the statistics. Of Actually, I'll just open these crates later. I'll look at the statistics here for the Colbert. Let's see. Uh, let's escape and click profile. Um, and then let it load, of course. Because, you know, it takes 600 years to load, of course. And then uh, let's scroll down to let's try look for Colbert. I would ask you guys to help me, but again, I'm not streaming, so... Alright, so, for our damage, we get... So, our average is 69% win rate, which isn't too bad. These are mostly solo, I believe. Yeah, they are. Um, so, mostly solo, 69% win rate. Damage to ships, average 131,000. We buffed it today. 352,000 is my record. That's solo as well. But today we got 306k today, so that's pretty good. Uh, potential average, you know. Here's the stats. If you want to pause the video and just take a look at my Colbert stats, if you're interested, here you are. Um, again, I definitely recommend this ship for people that love this type of playstyle. Um, I love this thing. It's one of my favorite ships in the game to have fun in. Um, and I definitely would recommend it if you do like ships that I like. But then again, I can't recommend it, for example, you know, just to anyone. Because it's not that easy of a recommendation. For example, you'd probably pick Ohio, for example, instead of it. I wouldn't, but I just play, you know, I prefer playing this for fun, you know. Um, but... Anyway, guys, to end of the video, I would like to t thank you guys for all the support, obviously. Um, we're ap slowly approaching 5,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube, which means we do get a giveaway that Wargaming will sponsor. Basically, I get to pick the premium ships um, for you guys, and we'll do a giveaway, basically. And I'll announce things later, when, if, if or when we get to 5,000 subs. But, um... I hope you enjoyed this video, and Colbert, please do let me know if you did or you didn't in the comments. Please do leave a like or a subscription if you did enjoy, or a join on the Discord, or a follow on the Twitch. Everything would be greatly appreciated, guys. And as I said, I did enable YouTube membership for those guys who are wondering about it, um, what it is. It's basically a way to support me and to help me do this as basically almost like a job, basically. So... I try my best to get as much content out there. You don't have to. If you don't want to, guys, I would just greatly appreciate it, obviously. Um, but apart from that, you also get emotes and badges. If you notice, some people in the comments have badges and emotes that they can use in the comments, for example, uh, such as of my, my channel. And you can also get a role on Discord to show that you are supporting. But that's if you link your Discord with your YouTube through discord but there you go guys i hope you enjoyed the colbert video before i go i want to show you the alternate camo for colbert here which is the just the alternate french camo colors here you go i used to play with this one but i actually prefer the more the gray one i do like the gray one more so there you go and um, the with the blue tarts are very cool so there you go there's the colbert i hope you guys enjoyed the video um and i'll see you in the next one big fan by the way